Hey everybody, this is Corey from the Long Story Short Show. I just wanted to remind you guys to comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell where you can always be up to date on the five or six videos that we post every single week. Thank you again for watching this video and I hope you enjoy. All right, so we're going to talk about the story arc called Mayor Fisk. It's written by Charles Soule, Stefano Landini, and Matt Mila. And Charles Soule is actually a lawyer or a formal lawyer. So we really do have a lot of legal play and a lot of legal terminology in this story. And it actually serves very well for Matt Murdock being a lawyer himself. Um, but besides all that, let's just open up the story with Kingpin is the mayor. Wilson Fisk was elected the mayor while Matt Murdock was, let's just say, out of state. He comes back and he finds out Wilson Fisk is mayor and he automatically thinks that it was not fair play. There had to be somebody rigging the system. He understands that much. He just doesn't know how or how he's going to figure out a way to prove it. On the other side of the coin, Wilson Fisk believes he is the people's choice. And to flaunt, he is going to take his well-known public arch nemesis, Matt Murdock, the person, and appoint him as the deputy mayor of New York City. Now, the deputy mayor is kind of a funny thing that they actually bring up numerous times in this book. The deputy mayor does become the mayor if the active mayor at the time becomes ill or incapacitated. He does not become mayor if the active duty mayor becomes impeached. The more you know. Matt actually accepts the position, seeing that it's a mindless position that doesn't take a lot of energy. He has more than enough time to try to find out more information on Fisk and more of his schemes now that he's mayor. He can't really touch him as Daredevil, but he can still overhear Intel if he's in the same building as him, using his obvious Daredevil supersonic abilities. At this moment, Wilson Fisk does not know that Matt Murdock is Daredevil but he is still an enemy of Matt Murdock as he has been tried and sued by Matt Murdock numerous times. This being said, he knows that it's good to keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. He assigns Matt Murdock an assistant named Steve. Steve is basically there to debrief Matt on all the books that he can't possibly read. Remember, Matt Murdock is blind, so he actually has somebody around to read him all this boring paperwork and boring legal literature that they have in the city hall ideally kingpin wants to make matt murdoch so busy that matt couldn't possibly have time to try to find out more intel about what the kingpin is trying to do it's actually a pretty smart plan but matt's working overtime he's working all day trying to find out intel about the kingpin at work then he's going out as daredevil at night to hit the streets to find out some more intel about the kingpin and this is actually when he finds a corner store being robbed and obviously he does what the hero would do in that situation and he goes and stops the muggers but this is when you start seeing the effects the effects i'm sorry of kingpin's new york the corner store clerk actually does not thank Daredevil. He starts calling the police, and Daredevil is left there to try to navigate away from the actual police and SWAT teams that get called. He remembers that there's a zero tolerance for vigilantes, but he never thought it would go this far. Luckily, Frank McGee is nearby with a couple of Attilan guards as backup. Frank McGee, now Attilan head of security, used to be an FBI agent and he happened to stumble upon the Terrigen Mist, which gave him the power to emit light rays from his eyes. So usually he hides them like Cyclops does, except these light rays come out yellow and they don't actually hit you with a concussive blast. They more just blind the opponent and leave them incapacitated for a short amount of time. Frank fills in Matt on all the details of what's been happening at New Attilum lately, namely that Muse is on the leash. Muse is a serial killer that has more artistic purposes and drivings than uh, you would say most others have. He needs to have a reason why he's killing people and he needs to have an artistic purpose of why he's killing people. Uh, Daredevil in his sidekick blind spot took him down once, but he was able to take blind spot's eyes in the process. While Frank is filling in Matt on all the details, he actually gets a call from blind spot who has located the first of Muse's new murals. At this point, Fisk has the police working nonstop to both catch all the vigilantes on a street level basis and to catch Muse. He wants all these murals taken down. He has some of Luke Cage, he has some of 
uh, Iron Fist, he has some of, I think he has some of She-Hulk as well. A bunch of street level vigilantes that Fisk has had an all out war against since the first day of his inauguration. Okay, so the next day, Matt goes to work and him and Steve are instructed to review more judiciary paperwork. So it's not really that hard just listening to somebody talk in the background. So he just pretends like he's listening to everything Steve says. And while he's doing that, he's actually tuning in to what the Kingpin and Wesley are talking about in a couple rooms, uh, I guess, to the side or something like that. Uh, he hears Wesley and Kingpin talking about things like Muse. He hears him talking about Project Sarnos. And he takes it upon himself to actually storm into the Kingpin's office and tell him that it is not in his best interest to chase down Muse. Kingpin wonders how Matt knew what he was talking about already. But nonetheless, he says he is the mayor and he has the final decision. And if Matt knew better, he would, number one, quit bringing this up. And number two, tell his friends, daredevil to stay back and stay away while he still can matt who is not a fan of the ultimatum chooses to don the black suit once again so that he could follow wesley at night he wants to do a little bit of investigation on what exactly kingpin has to do that's so important that he cannot devote his full attention to muse however we find out that kingpin is actually trying to bring together the crime bosses of new york we're talking about hammerhead we're talking about uh, Black Cat, we're talking about Diamondback, and he wants all of them to be part of the new infrastructure of New York. Uh, we're talking about education, sanitation, construction, things like that. So he's trying to put the crime bosses into those positions so he can always have some kind of pool and some kind of sway in these different aspects of New York. Meanwhile, over in the meatpacking district, Muse is actually working on another mural of the Punisher right now when two girls actually are walking by. Now, I'm assuming it's pretty late at night and these girls are going back from a club or maybe they're heading towards a club or something like that, but they're in the mood to party because they stop Muse and they are instantly starstruck. So they try to take a picture of Muse and that's when we figure out you can't really take pictures of this guy. You just see the circulatory system that he has. So that's, that's another big hint to what exactly the Muse is and where we are now with the whole Muse character. Um, he looks at them and he starts to just picture himself attacking them. He's like, yeah, that actually does sound like a good idea. So when he goes in for the attack, that's when the police show up. Unfortunately for them, Muse makes easy, short work of the police and kills every single one of them right then and there and uses their dead bodies and blood to decorate his uh, mural of the Punisher. So this next part is important. This next part we bring in Blind Spot again. You're probably wondering how Blind Spot can see if he got his eyes taken by Muse. Blind Spot actually made a pact with the Hand, the actual god entity of the Hand named the Beast, in order to get his eyesight back. So right now he has all black eyes with blue pupils, and this is the only reason why he can see right now. But he still holds that grudge for Muse taking his eyes. So he approaches Matt and asks him, why isn't Matt focusing more on Muse? Why is he still constantly letting himself be distracted by Fisk if he knows Fisk isn't an immediate problem? This has been typical for their relationship for some time. Uh, Matt will make a promise to help Muse, I'm sorry, help Blindspot, and then he'll just come up short on that promise. So at this point, Blindspot is a little tired of the same old, same old. So he says to Matt that he will go find Muse himself one way or another. At this point, Matt feels like he's being pushed to his limits. So he goes once again to go see Fisk in his office to berate him and blame him for the current situation at hand. He tells Fisk that he knows that it wasn't the Punisher. Even though Fisk wants to know why, Fisk still hasn't put the pieces together just yet. But Matt keeps on pushing the situation. He says that he knows that Muse is still out there and that he needs uh, mayor to actually do the mayor's job and let the people know about the current situation at hand. Wilson replies and says that he's actually having a conference tonight at Central Park at the castle so that he can tell everybody that they are in a much peaceful, safer New York City where vigilantes and criminals and all those kind of things don't run rampant and there is a little bit more control. And if he would like, Matt can show up. But if not, then he's getting fired from his job. So Matt makes the decision then and there that he will show up tonight, but not before he takes out Fisk once and for all. 
in Chinatown, Blind Spot is working in his personal workshop trying to figure out ways to bring out Muse from hiding. He thinks it will be easier for him to attract Muse rather than to go out looking for Muse. So he starts bringing in all of his personal equipment to see if he can come up with some kind of contraption, and he does. He figures out that the best way to do it is just get a high intense paint gun to cover up his murals. His murals are actually made of some kind of substance that people are unfamiliar with. So it's not as easy as just rubbing it off the windows and mirrors and walls. They're actually stuck there until further notice. So Blind Spot covers his art because he knows the best way to anger an artist is to disrespect their art. Unfortunate for Blindspot, Muse actually shows up a lot sooner than he thought and pushes him off the building top. On the other side of the city, Daredevil's bringing all the street level heroes together so that they can stake out Kingpin and try to catch him red-handed while he's doing some criminal activity. Essentially what Daredevil's plan is is that if he's able to catch Kingpin with the help of all these street level vigilantes, red-handed, he will have enough evidence to impeach Kingpin from office. He himself, Matt Murdock, does not want to be mayor. However, he just wants Kingpin to be out of the mayoral office, if that makes sense. It doesn't personally make sense to me. I personally think he does want to become mayor. That being said, they choose that night to stake out this restaurant because since he was following Wesley, he does know that there is a crime meeting happening there and then. The only thing he's missing is the kingpin. It's been a couple minutes, it's been a half hour, it's been an hour, and the kingpin still hasn't shown up. The crime bosses inside the restaurant are actually getting restless and decide to open fire on each other as a fear as this is a setup from some unknown party. All the street level heroes that Daredevil has recruited run into the restaurant to try to stop the open fire, and that's when the police show up. However, this wasn't the police that Daredevil called. This was a police a squadron that was sent preactively or preemptively in order to catch these people in action by the kingpin. Unfortunately for Daredevil, all the street level heroes who are on the scene at the time get arrested just as well as the crime bosses. In fear that he'll be falling into another trap, Daredevil decides to go see kingpin face to face as Daredevil in order to get him to release these heroes. So, as we go back to the fight between Muse and Blindspot, we actually see that Blindspot caught himself on the fight escape on the way down. So, Muse is actually talking to him, saying things like, you know, we could put this fight off for another day, and that would just be another epic footnote in what is our battles, you know, across history. That's the kind of way that Muse looks at things. Everything has to be an art production. Everything has to be uh, deeper than what it really is. So, that's the kind of character Muse is, but that's just consistent with this character. Um, blind spot he goes up to try to attack Muse and he's getting overpowered the fights 100% one-sided in Muse's favor but Muse does notice that blind spot has his eyes back and he wonders to himself out loud like if you have your eyes back why are you mad at me you're the one that ruined my art it seems like that we're not even anymore and so he c proceeds to actually break blind spots arm right then and there this is when what I can only describe as some Naruto type stuff happens where the beast inside of uh, Samuel Chung uh, blind spot starts saying to him like hey I have the power that I can give you right now you still have the eyes that you have taken from me you still have remnants of my power that I can unlock for you all you have to do is ask I can give you the power to kill Muse here and now all you have to do is make a pact with me like your mother did and you have to follow through with that pact this time around Blindspot accepts the gift, he accepts the power, and with a burst of fire energy, he blows back um, Muse, probably about like 10-15 feet, but the most noticeable thing is that everything around him is on fire. It's kind of like he just went Super Saiyan right now, uh, you're talking about the water tower on top of the building's on fire, the building top is on fire, and then the fight goes 100% in the opposite direction, where Blindspot just lets out an unrelenting assault on Muse. At this point, Blindspot's asking him, why? Why are you doing this? Why do you do this? And Muse has nothing to say except it's art. It's art. It's art. Why do we do anything? Why do you put on a mask? I do this because I have to. I do this because I have an urge to, and I just fulfill that urge, and that's exactly what it is. This is enough to change Blindspot's mind, at least snap him back to reality, where he tells the beast that he's not going to accept the gift. 
unfortunate for him in the future this is going to play a big part in part two of this story because the hand and furthermore the beast do not like it when you break their contracts or take their power so we will see the consequences and repercussions of this later after refusing the gift he decides to let Muse not go, but he's going to actually capture him alive. Muse decides that this isn't a fitting end for him. If he is caught alive, this stops being a story about Muse and starts being a story about Blindspot. So Muse jumps into the fire face first and burns himself to the ground. Um, I personally do not believe this is the last we will see of Muse, but as we can see from the ashes, all we're left with is the clothes and um, maybe the ashes of his baby. So. Um, if this is the end of Muse, this is a pretty cool ending. Um, if not, then I'm looking forward to what we see next. But we're going to wrap up this part of the video right there. It's a little longer, but on the next part, we are going to have a fight from Matt Murdock and Kingpin. We're going to have hand ninjas, and we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff that I really am excited for you guys to see. So please comment, like, subscribe, and stick tuned for part two of how Matt Murdock became mayor. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, this is Corey from the Long Story Short Show, and if you're watching this, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe so we can know if you like this kind of content, or you guys can always recommend content that you guys would like to see in the nearby future. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys later.